Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be continuing the talk on feng shui. We'll continue the study of the rooms of your home. Today, we'll concentrate on the living room. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to create several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. When learning the principles of feng shui, I like to approach the subject as if the knowledge were placed on an ever-descending spiral that moves ever deeper into the understanding of feng shui. First, we explore what qi is and the different types of qi. Then we move around the spiral of knowledge again at a deeper level and explore the concepts of yin and yang. And then we move on to a discussion of the five elements, the three cycles, the nine star system, your lucky stars, the fortune of your door, the study of the Bagua, the two diagnostic methods, the effects of clutter, difficult door and window placements, how to handle problems associated with the shape of your home, and how to use color to harmonize the chi of your home, and how to use lighting and mirrors to harmonize the chi of your home, and learning about the passageways of your home, and the bedroom, and the bathroom, and today we'll continue the study of the rooms of your home, in particular how to handle the living room and the family room. A person's home is divided between passageways and rooms. The passageways include the doors, the foyer, the hallways, and the stairwells. The rooms include the living room, family room, kitchen, dining room, bathroom, bedroom, study, and home office. In feng shui, the challenge in decorating a living room is to create a space that is beautiful and practical while ensuring it has a strong, fresh, clean, and happy energy. Getting all of these elements into a single room usually takes quite a bit of planning and persistence. A living room that is clean and clutter-free is the foundation of good feng shui. While you might have heard many times that this is an essential first step, step this point cannot be emphasized enough. There can be no solid and good feng shui energy in a space that is infected by clutter. The two of them cannot coexist. It is either one or the other. The living room is the most yang and public area in the home. It should be warm and cheerful, welcoming and comfortable. It is meant to bring about opportunities for social interaction for you and your guests and should be decorated with your most aesthetically pleasing possessions. Its furnishings, in addition to couches, chairs, tables and lamps, may include a stereo, a TV, musical instruments, various works of art and plants. The living room can be organized around one or more of the eight points or it can be organized around the power point, which is always diagonally across the doorway. Or it can be organized around a special feature such as a fireplace or an interesting urban or garden view. If you organize the living room around one or more of these eight points, your best choices are the money, marriage or friends points respectively. Try to use the money point as your focal point. If the room is large enough for you to arrange the furniture around two points, let the larger arrangement go around the money point. To give you a general idea of how this works, place a beautiful work of art, a standing plant or a television set in the area of the money point and arrange the furniture around it as suggested in the first diagram. You might also arrange the room around its power point, diagonally across from the doorway as shown in the second diagram. Arrange the living room around the power point will give you command over the room if that is your desire. If you prefer to organize the room around a special view, such as a garden location, the best sitting point or points in the room and place your favorite chairs or couches at these points so that anyone who sits there may enjoy the view. Then arrange the rest of the furniture to complement the chairs 
and or coaches that you have placed in these special seating positions. Do not position the host's chair or the main couch so that it looks directly out the door. If you are the host, you'll feel too exposed and anyone walking into the room will feel confronted by you. It is basically a very antagonistic and stressful location. It's best not to position the main couch or chair so that it faces directly out a window either because it will also cause you to feel exposed and therefore stressed. Do not position the main chair or couch so that its back is to the door or to a window. This will make you feel, feel ill at ease or threatened because you can't see what's going on behind you. Although chairs and couches for guests may be positioned with their backs to the windows or doorways, it is better to position them with the backs to the wall if it's at all possible. Walls serve as protective barriers and will make you and your guests feel secure to have a wall at your back. Chairs and couches should be positioned in harmonious alignments with the doors and windows to generate a feeling of easy movement in the room. Couches directly facing one another, as shown in the first diagram, bring people into intensive communication. This could work very well for people who are intimately involved, but might be too stressful for people who are not. If you have couches that directly face one another and can't place them any other way, you can ease their intensity with soft lighting. The seating configuration shown in the next two diagrams are more relaxing than the than that shown in the first diagram. In this diagram, we see what is called a bow shape. This works well anywhere except in front of the doorway of an adjoining room, where it will send secret arrows into the adjoining room. Try to position your favorite chair so that its back is to the compass direction of one of your lucky stars. Sitting with your lucky star to your back, brings its invigorating energy into your body. There are three situations when the chi runs through and slits up the room that must be remedied. When one window directly opposes another window, use blinds or curtains on one or both of the windows. When a door directly opposes a window, in this case, use blinds or curtain the window. When a door directly opposes another door, use a screen to conceal one of the doors if the screen doesn't obstruct movement. In this diagram shows another way to resolve the problem of doors facing doors. In this diagram it shows a living room which also doubles as a passageway to another room. As you can see, the living room area is much smaller than the actual size of the room. As the passageways have to remain open, the room was arranged to create a sense of intimacy in a clearly defined area, while allowing free movement through the rest of the room, as shown in the second figure. The shape of the arrangement of the furniture together with the fireplace describes an octagon, a most auspicious form. The octagon symbolizes the union of heaven and earth. Contrary to the characteristic nature of a living room, a sunken living room is yin. Nonetheless, as sunkenness implies the element of water, and as water generates wood, it can be transformed to yang by placing potted plants, especially tall standing plants, around the room. If the room has insufficient light, artificial light should be installed. Another alternative is to use trees with leaves made of silk. In the north side of the living room, an aquarium will bring wealth and auspicious opportunities. Keep eight red and one black fish in the aquarium. Square or rectangular shaped aquariums are best. Round ones will also do. Another solution is to have a water fountain in the north, as it will also attract wealth and luck. 
The fountain must flow towards the room and not outwards. You could also hang a picture of a beautiful water body such as a meandering river or a boat or a ship sailing, but be sure that the picture of the boat sails into the room and not away from the room. Putting your TV in the north area will attract good luck in your career. In the south side of your living room, place candles, wood furniture, and other wooden decor items around the room. A fireplace in the south is wonderful. Place your TV or plants in the south to stimulate fame and respect. In the east and southeast side of your living room, put wood items like picture wood picture frames, lamps, bookshelves, these kinds of things. Hang coins tied with red ribbons in the east corner, which brings wealth and money. Hang dragon paintings that are looking into the house on the east wall to bring wealth. Plants in the southeast bring wealth and money. Plants in the east direct attract a direction. Plants in the east direction attract health. It is good to keep an aquarium in the southeast as it attracts wealth and luck. Keep eight red and one black fish in the aquarium. Square rectangular shaped aquariums are best. Round ones will also do. In the west and northwest side of your living room, keep metal decor objects such as bowls and trays. Put metal figurines, furniture, candle holders, photo frames and so forth in this area. Family pictures in metal frames on the west wall will bring luck and harmonious family relations. In the northeast and southwest side of your living room, you can place crystals and other mineral objects. Keep pottery and ceramics, such as showpieces, pots, bowls, and so forth, in this area. This is also a good location to place cut glass and hand-blown glass objects. A fireplace in the northeast helps to provide peaceful thinking and also brings luck in education. And now we come to the part where you use the following steps to arrange the furniture of your living room. First, select the main focal point of the room. If the room has a fireplace, it should be the main focal point. If there is no fireplace, the main focal point could be one of the eight points, such as the money point or the marriage point. If you don't have a fireplace, consider what to put at the main focal point. It might be a sofa, or an entertainment unit, a musical instrument, a piece of sculpture, a painting, a wall hanging, or a standing plant. Then select your main piece of furniture. It should either be your favorite sofa or your favorite chair. Consider placing your chair or sofa in different areas in the room relative to the door and windows, as well as to the main focal point, depending on what you have decided to place at that focal point. It may not be necessary for the sofa or chair to face it. For example, if you have decided to hang a painting at your main focal point, you could place your favorite so sofa with its back against the wall directly below that painting. If you find several areas in the room that are good for the placement of your chair or sofa, refer to your personal data list to see if one of these areas allows you to align your chair or sofa with its back to the compass direction of one of your lucky stars, or to the direction that is in harmony with your birth star. If this alignment complements your selected main focal point, use it. If it doesn't, consider changing the focal point. Once you've found the key placement of your favorite chair or sofa and the main focal point of the room, arrange the other pieces of furniture around the focal point in a balanced composition with your favorite chair or sofa. The family room should be arranged in a completely informal way so that everyone will be able to relax and enjoy being there together. The furniture should be useful comfortable and movable to allow for different activities such as games, watching television, and so forth. Because it's a very active area filled with cheerfulness and warmth, 
The family room should have light colors and be filled with decorations and mementos. If you want to organize anything like a game table or entertainment unit around any of the eight points, you might consider using the family and children point. You could also put pictures of family members and family gatherings at the family point. You could use the family room as a barometer for gaining insight into the well-being of the various family members according to the following method. Find the middle of the room and then the eight areas using your compass. Each area represents a family member. The southwest area represents the mother. The northwest area represents the father. The east represents the eldest son. The north represents the middle son. The northeast area represents the youngest son. The southeast area represents the eldest daughter. The south represents the middle daughter, and the west area represents the youngest daughter. If you have one son and or one daughter, the east represents your son and the southeast represents your daughter. If you have two sons and or two daughters, the east represents the eldest son, the northeast represents the younger son, the southeast represents the elder daughter, and the West represents the younger daughter. The family room is likely to be in a continuous state of flux, and you need to be aware of repeti repetitive accumulation of clutter in any one area. This will point to complicated developments in the life of whomever that area represents. I have a great many videos now on many different topics, so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.